Jai Hind everyone, welcome again to the Pet Talk Guys. Let's start our ISPCS Wallet Daily Current Affairs. We have nearly about nine topic for the discussion, so we will see that what are the topic we are going to discuss. We will start with the poll bond that declaration given by the SBI, and now it is uh, brought on the website by the Election Commission of India. So we will see that what are the major data information so it is for the mains then we will study that panel recommended simultaneous election one nation one election so very important for the mains perspective what are the recommendations we should try to get clarity then we will study this appointment of election commissioner so we will see that what is the different debate that is going on the election of the poli um, election commissioner so it will be for the mains perspective after that we will study this atapaka bird sanctuary into the andhra pradesh so just we will locate it and we will know that this is famous for the migratory species so it will be for the prelims after that we will study this uh, uh, this mix implementation of the forest right act so it will be for the mains so it can be studied with perspective of the society as well as the social justice after that we will study this uh, bhutan bhutan's prime minister is in the india and also indian prime minister is about to visit the bhutan so this is a uh, ir topic but it is talking about the model code of conduct how the prime minister modi can visit or not so it will be for the mains perspective then we will study this roda mine b and what is this so we will study with respect to the prelims then we will study this uh, advisory that is from the ministry of electronics and it so we will study that how the trend has been changed now what is the repo question with respect to the mains perspective and then we will study this india bhutan relations this is in a very detailed manner you can use it as per your optional subject as well as the suhasini had the has provided a detailed analysis so for the mains analysis mains perspective let's start with the front page this is talking uh, about the so much weighted electoral bond declaration so it has been found that the lottery magnets forms was under ed pressure this is the single largest donor and donated 1368 crore you can consider you can imagine this amount a company is paying that much for the political funding bharatiya janata party ruling party in cash bond worth of the 6060 crore highest among all the parties so here it is given that who are the highest receivers bjp then all india uh, it is in the mool congress then congress then bharatiya rashtriya samiti biju janata dal it is very much congress is here it is despite the at the national level but the in the mool congress that is receiving more than congress so a bit yes a surprising thing so bjp sales is of the total bond in cash by the parties was over 47% half of the electoral bond money that was with the um, uh, bjp okay so here it is given that uh, what are the form donated other party the percentage 12% congress okay congress no uh, yes tim uh, in the mool congress that is 12% congress 11% so please remember 22 donated more than 100 crore during this period the period that was this uh, electoral bond was active in this period okay data supplied by sbi doesn't include the serial number of the bonds so yes something fishy here you can see that they are not providing the serial number maybe you uh, this supreme court will force again to please provide this the most important thing you should know that some if in the case of the total number of the electoral bond that was purchased from the sbi was 22217 but in cash was 22030 so some of the electoral bond was purchased but it was not given to the any political party that become uh, useless 
so it uh, it doesn't become the useless the money that is purchased by this bond goes to the pr uh, prime minister national relief fund so please be careful about this this can be asked into the prelims okay so this is all about next news that is about the recommendation for the one nation one election and now it has given the recommendation that we should start with the simultaneous election of the Lok Sabha and the state legislature and after 100 days we can go for the panchayats and the municipal elections okay into the next phase this is given overall it is 1800 uh, 18,000 pages document only 321 pages has been uh, put into the public domain for the analysis you should uh, know that the law commission is also inquiring about the one nation one election and it submits its report to the law ministry please remember this okay the presidential uh, here the proposal is that there should be the appointed date and that date will fix that after that date uh, there will be the clubbing of the elections different assembly and before that so here it is talking about the electoral cycle and that will be after the appointed date so here it is given how the elections will be held and one more thing it is given that in between if the there is the dissolution of the parliament by the hung assembly or the no confidence motion in that case if there will be the election of the Lok Sabha the tenure of the Lok Sabha will be the remaining period of the previous Lok Sabha. For example, if the previous Lok Sabha has the five years of the tenure, okay, and if it has the five years of the tenure, okay, this Lok Sabha is going on. After three years, there is the no confidence motion, no confidence motion, and no party is about to or able to form the government in that case there will be the new election for the parliament and those this election those members that will come and the whole parliament the tenure will be only two years so this is a drawback here again maybe consider that you are doing the two election in a year and this uh, making the money the that amount of the money you are spending for the just two years of the tenure so it's again uh, ask, uh, create the question marks okay here it is given that the when the fresh election are held for the legislative assembly again there will be the change into the period of the this assembly elections is election tenure as well assembly tenure as well what are the articles of the constitution that is needed to be amended there, there about total 18 amended amendments is needed and most important amendment is the article 83 and 172 please remember that article 83 and article 172 talks about the tenure of the Lok Sabha and the state legislature very important because this is into the news consistently UPSC or the state PCS there is chances that they can ask article 83 and article 172 they are related to the tenure the period that is the five years okay again article 324a and article 325a that's allow election commissioners in a consultation with the state election authority to prepare a common electoral rolls and a voter id card okay so this is here because till now this panchayat election and municipal election is being held by the state election commissioner now after the simultaneous election it will be the election commission of india that will be responsible for the simultaneous election at the all these stages okay so here it is given the total number of amendments you should remember so here what is the region that is given by the panel is that the several elections are being held every year and this is creating the burden on the state exchequer and it also causes the disturbing and burden on the government business court political parties candidates and civil society in different manner due to the disruption due to the election this is the case here okay 
So here all this thing has been uh, put forward, so there will be further uh, news analysis on that, we will further analyze that. So you should know all these things, you should know this law commission uh, submitting report to the law ministry, okay. And uh, yes, there is the articles, major articles that is needed to be amended, so you should remember this. Again, the next news is again from the election and it is the appointment of the election commission. Now the government has appointed two of the election commissioners, those seat ward vacant. And this election has been done as per the recent law that has been brought by the parliament. The name of this law is the chief election commissioner and other commissioner appointment condition of services and term of office act 2003 23. Recently passed, last year it was passed even after the Supreme Court judgment that was not, that was bypassed by this law. This law is talking, this law is talking that there will be the election committee and this selection committee will recommend the name for the appointment of the election, chief election commissioner and the election commissioners. So here this committee, this act provided that it will be the the three member committee will be there, one will be the prime minister, second will be the leader of opposition or the largest party into the Lok Sabha. Two are the clear, two are also remain into the Supreme Court judgment. One changes was that is done, as per this law, it will be the union minister, union cabinet minister appointed by the prime minister, that will be the part. But as per the Supreme Court judgment, it should be the chief justice of India. So, three member that was given by the the first recommendation under the Supreme Court judgment that was talking about the members, Prime Minister, Leader of Opposition, okay, and Chief Justice of India. The law made by the government, the law made by the parliament, it's brought the Prime Minister leader of opposition but here in the state of CGI it brought the union minister, union cabinet minister appointed by the prime minister, nominated by the prime minister. So this is here, so tussle is going on, there is the case into the Supreme Court that uh, uh, this union cabinet minister appointed and nominated by the prime minister should be replaced by the Chief Justice of India, so that more transparency, more accountability could be held. You should know the name of these two bureaucrats. They are the former IS officer, the Gyanesh Kumar and Sukhbinder, Sukhbir Singh. You should remember these two names for the state pieces, it could be asked. Rajiv Kumar is the Chief Election Commissioner, please remember that. Next important news is with respect, is, uh, with respect to this is the AP Sanctuary, the name of this sanctuary is the Atapaka Board Sanctuary. This is in the Andhra Pradesh and it is very close to the Koleru Lake that is very famous for the migratory boats and it is expected that this time near about 1.5 lakh of the boats, migratory boats are about to reach and uh, stay here. Please remember that. Let's see the location. This is the location, this is here, Koleru Lake is here, so please remember that, okay, so you should remember this, Attapaka Bird Sanctuary, Attapaka Bird Sanctuary may the UPSC ask into the prelim, so that's important. Next important news is with respect to the implementation of the Forest Right Act, here it has mentioned that the, this for implementation, or the, there is the study and study is being done by the Call for the Justice is a NGO that is based on the, in the Delhi and here the study was done into the five states, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra, Assam, Odisha and Karnataka and it was found that the, the, the implementation is the mix. In the some of the area there has been the clear cut the rights uh, that has been recognized at the individual level and the community level but in the few of the state it was uh, find that the there was a confusion with respect to the individual labor rights and the community forest right here, okay. So the claim was submitted and rejected, the most rejection is into the Karnataka here. 
the claim at the individual level individual level claim like the my right for the land my right uh, right for the produce so many uh, such rights are provided on the minor forest produce so the claim is done but the, it was rejected so here it is uh, from the different state beside that uh, there has been the found that uh, the jhum cultivation that is found into the north stone states they need a special recognition because as per the community need the slash and burning slash and burning of the plants on the hill slope is necessary so generally it is avoided because this is considered as the environmentally not friendly this is cause the degradation but the for the need of this community into the tribal area they need this okay beside that you should also need the uh, you should know that uh, now the bhutanese prime minister who was uh, elected uh, now he uh, he uh, was taken into the january again he was uh, previously the same uh, person was the prime minister again the name of the, uh, his is the saving tobge so he is on the five day visit to the india and you should know what is the capital of the bhutan it is the thimphu okay so here uh, he he mentioned that the prime minister modi is about to visit nepal as well after the uh, one week maybe after seven days but the thing is that now we are going to implement the model code of the conduct as the election date are about to come and if the election dates comes model code of conduct implemented from the that day so particular after the declaration of the date prime minister cannot uh, visit other countries neither he can take the major decision so it is it, it seems difficult that he will visit and even if he will visit there is the very less chances that the major decision will be taken beside that uh, there is the jellefu mindfulness city development that is proposed into the bhutan so let's see what is going on so there is the a uh, detail article that has been uh, discussed into the editorial section so we will study this into uh, as there so this is all about from the this news only you should know this thing okay next important news that we will take is that why government are seeing red on the road in mine b so recently we saw that tamil nadu government as well as the karnataka government they banned this zoda mine b into the use of the food product so what is this zoda mine b this is a dye for the coloring and this dye is also uh, gives a lot of beautiful color and this is in the form of pink green blue okay the thing is that now many of a uh, food product they are being used to bring the better color attractive color so that the young and child can be attracted and if you will see that the cotton candy where this is being used and this is harmful okay so you should be careful about and even they are being used into the pakora and the manchurian and even the sauce so whenever you see the attractive color please be cautious be careful and this sauce for the chinese food so be cautious whenever you go for the chinese food as well and this is not only uh, impacting for the uh, this small health issue but the, it is causing the cancer as well this is the main thing okay even the small quantity of use for the long use this has the health implication and the long term consumption can cause allergy as well and this allergy can be manifested into the irritation of the lip tongue as well as the eye even it is causing the upper respiratory allergy okay so please be careful recently we saw that this has the impact on the kidney damage of the kidney as well as liver and it increases the risk of stomach tumor this is the other risk factor that has been found so this is the thing that's why it is being analyzed and yes it is being banned by the different government this is also causing the death cell cell death okay here the cell is being uh, cell, uh, cell death as well as it is causing the damage the cerebellum tissue and the brain stem so lot of issue you should know this all this health issue maybe in the prelims it uh, the question can be framed from the this area 
Fasai has already uh, brought and approved so many uh, certified the food uh, coloring agent, and you should know the name: the caramel, saffron, annatto, riboflavium, and curcumin. So here it is given the name of the agent that is used for the food coloring and that already approved by the Fasai. But it is not being this Zodemine B that has not been approved by the Fasai. Okay, what is this Food Standard Safety Authority of India? This is the regulatory authority for the food product and the safety of the food. So you should know. Next important news is this inevitable collapse and this is talking about the, the breakdown of the coalition between the BJP and uh, JJP that is the Jan Nayak Janta Party, JJP that is the party from the Haryana. So you should uh, just know about that uh, why there is the breakdown. The mainly breakdown is due to the, they have the different uh, vote bank and if they go for the same in the coalition it will be counterproductive for the both. This JJP, this has the base into the, the those JAT community that is the agrarian class JAT community. But the BJP has the vote bank into the non-JAT community and particularly those who belong from the uh, caste such as the Sanis, Banias, Brahmins, Yadav and Punjabis. This is the, they are the main uh, base for the BJP. Here they, they do not like this. Recently we saw that there was the demand for the quota from the JOT community and this offended this community. They didn't like. Okay. So that's why they, if they, uh, if any community, if any party represent the JOT community, they go for the against to the that, com, uh, that party. So they will go for the BJP. That is the thought process of the B BJP here. Okay. And uh, here the BJP is also targeting the OBC vote because OBC constitute 40% of the Haryana population. So that's why we saw that recently the Nayab Singh Sani, this is the uh, chief minister candidate and he uh, is from the OBC community. So you should just know the basics about this. Beside that we will go for the, yes, here we should know that the JAT form the 25% of the population of the Haryana. So this is the region, even we saw that in 2019, uh, the JJP that fought against the BJP, but after the election, they formed the coalition to take the benefit of the being into the power. Okay, so this is the very much a very irony that the before the election, the uh, the equation for the coalition is very different. It need to be aligned with the ideology and the values, but the both JJP and the BJP has the very contradictory ideology and the value. That's why pre-poll alliance is not possible. Maybe after the uh, election, post-poll alliance is possible because the, there is the only consideration of the taking the benefit of the being into the power. Next news again, this is not that much relevant. It is talking about the what is going into the uh, USA. The Republican Party again, it is going, uh, it is the Donald Trump that is going to be candidate for the presidency and Joe Biden that is going from the Democrats. Okay, so here we saw that uh, Nikki Haley, uh, she was a hope that uh, uh, she could be replaced the, to, to Donald Trump, but uh, now she has been out of the race and this is again, the equation has brought the 2019, 2020 equation of the Joe Biden from the Democrats and Donald Trump from the Republicans, that is again the same equation is there. Here it is shown that the both, uh, why the uh, Trump is getting his support, particularly those uh, those electorals who thought that uh, Donald Trump has the relevance and he is important, significant because he has an unfinished political agenda of the make America great again. That was the slogan in 2020, now again it will be the slogan. Okay. The Joe Biden, despite he is more than 80 years old, but still he is the uh, he is the face because uh, no other leader can face the challenge of the Donald Trump, and that's why uh, that was the any alternative was not emerged in this primary election. So, next article that we are going to take is the in issuing AI advisory, Meaty becomes a DT. 
So what is the MITI? MITI is the Ministry of uh, Electronics and Information Technology. This is in the short form known as the MITI. Okay. We, uh, before that, uh, it's, uh, it was the Department of Electronic and IT. So it was the DT. Here the writer is saying that yes, in the reality it has become the DT, the way it is behaving. Because this, is, this article is talking about the recent advisory and notification from the ministry and this is replacing the laws and the common way of notifying the thing. Because it was in the documented form but now we see that the, the use of the social media and informal way of the notification and yes compliance that is being imposed. So this is not the good rule. It is It's create the authoritarian behavior that you say and it is going to be implemented. That is not, that should not be the case. Normally it is being uh, documented by the government and after that there is the consultation from the different stakeholders and only then the laws or the any rules are implemented. But here we saw that even from the social media posts such as from the Twitter or the X or any of such social media posts that has become the notification and advisory. Here it has given the different uh, different occasion on that it was used. For example, the term advisory lacked the definition under the principal uh, uh, legislation empowering METI and the Information Technology Act 2000. Okay, so here it is given that uh, this uh, uh, this METI and this Information Technology Act this doesn't give the uh, residual power to the METI. Residual power, what is the residual power? It is the power that is not written in the, uh, the, the area that is not mentioned into the act. For example, if any, but the residual power, whatever the, uh, comes under this area. For example, say we regulate the capital market and whenever the new things come into the capital market, so say we can regulate because even it is not written because it has the residual power. Okay. But the METI doesn't have the residual power because in the act it has not given that the who have the residual power. In the SEVI law, that is the proper mentioning of the residual power goes to the SEVI into the area of the capital market. So here it is given that whenever you bring the any advisory or anything, for example, recently we saw that there was the case of the deep fake and it emerged, it became the viral. That was from the uh, one of the actresses, Ras, uh, Rasmani Mandana. Okay, so there was the case, and after that there was the hue and cry, and the minister comes into the public uh, domain and he announced something. He gi gi uh, gave the order into the press con uh, conference. So the writer is saying that this is not the proper way. Okay, even uh, such cases uh, has the vog vogness. Okay. Because it doesn't define different terms that is being used. For example, under testing or the unreliable that is being used into the, this uh, press conference or the interview, they are not properly defined. So whenever the law comes with the documentation, these all terms get defined. So this is talking about all uh, all this thing. It has given the example that the we have shifted to the new way of doing the thing. Uh, and more use of the digital platform as compared to the documentary form. So here it is given that the deliberation is the old fashioned now. Because in the, uh, uh, normally in the traditional way, whenever there is the policy or anything that is about to become, before that there is the proper consultation and uh, uh, deliberation, discussion with the stakeholders. But here the minister comes and give orders and give notification and give the his uh, his view so and also defending the things here given one of the case of the 2014 where there was the criticism for the a draft encryption policy by the government and the government try to uh, consult with the all the stakeholders without going to defend its stand because it was found that this draft encryption policy is against the freedom of speech, freedom of expression. This could be used and misused by the government. So there was uh, a expert embassy now who criticized <coughs> 
and he wrote the tech policy place into the 2014. But the government going against that person, he, the government took all this uh, viewpoint into the consideration and this draft encryption policy was changed. Okay. But now we see that even the export and technical commentary is self-censored. They are the fearful, they are the scared of the backlash and the reaction from the government. So this is not good for the, this is not a good signal. And yes, this is not going to be a good for the policy making as, as well as for the implementation. Okay. So here what is expected? You are expected to pray, be polite and hope for the good sense of to prevail. Only well, hope can be there, only then the things could be uh, uh, taken. Okay. So this is about the this policy from the government that needed to be uh, uh, more deliberation, that needed to be the more consultation. Next important news that we are going to take is this Bhutan opening move. It's Jalefu Gambit. This Jalefu is the place in, uh, bordering the Assam. And this city is being developed as the sustainably industrial area that will be mainly focused on the uh, carbon neutral area. And what are the carbon neutral area? This, is, uh, this could be the IT industry or the education sector, the hotel and the hospital sector. So this is the area. This was proposed, this was uh, initiated by the, the king of Bhutan, Jigme Khesha Nangmayal Wangchuk. And now it has become the focus point main agenda for the Prime Minister Sering Togbe. Okay, so please remember this. Besides that, what are the it uh, going to provide the benefit to the India? Mostly it is the long term benefit and particularly the benefit into the area of the India's act East policy. So it will give a a gateway that will connect the northeastern India. After that, it will connect the Myanmar, and then we will enter into the Southeast Asian countries. This is the focus point because, uh, beside that, we also want to uh, implement it in the association with the Japan and India Japan connectivity plans will be the supplementing it. Beside that, we have seen that the seventh Indian Ocean Conference here into the port. Please remember that our external affairs ministry said that we need for a lateral land-based connectivity across the Indian Ocean. It is not only the Indian Ocean that we are going to develop the connectivity in the Indian Ocean. For example, in the Indian Ocean, uh, this India Middle East Europe economic corridor that we have proposed trilateral highway to the India East. These are the connectivity program. Beside that, this Jalepu Jalepu project, the city will supplement all this connectivity program. Okay, but the, the, this will be not that much easy because this is going to be a bit difficult. Why difficult? Because there is the geographical issue. This Jalepu, this is a broader plane and it's get lot of monsoon rainfall and this caused the flood okay so flood situation this city face beside that this is the landlocked area and not the landlocked uh, it has a very uh, long distance port uh, uh, Beside that, this Jalifu, this is a, this is surrounded by the forest and wildlife population, so environmental consideration will be always there. Beside that, it ha it is facing the insurgency, and because insurgency into the north is this is extended to the Bhutan area, and there is the famous operation All Clio. This is famous because it was led by the Bhutanese uh, uh, king itself and in the leadership of the Bhutanese king. So please remember all this thing. And this is very space, uh, so the very special relationship with the Indian Bhutan. Besides that, one more thing is that this Jalifu is the land locked. This is not connected by the any sea or any port. So this this create this increase its cost okay it's make made its dependence on the all this connectivity on the india primarily on the india beside that we see that uh, there is the a special tendency of the bhutan that try to reduce the incoming number of the people even in the tourism it's go for the high value low footfall 
type of the economic tourism here the motto is the high value low volume okay but the when you are going to develop such a large city and this needs lot of revenue so it need the increase in its tourism activity as well its need its demand for the its demand for the expansion of its airport because this jellifu airport this is not that much capable the capacity for the volume large number of the tourist that is coming is not sufficient by the this jellifu airport okay one more thing that to uh, this uh, bhutanese uh, population is facing is that the out migration and this youth of the bhutans they are out migrating in the search of the job and opportunity that is there into the bhutan okay besides that we see that the chinese angle here china is the uh, this bhutan is the only uh, neighbor of the india who doesn't have the direct connection with the china recently we saw that this is the bhutan only country uh, that has not supported the one belt one road initiative of the japan so it is out of its ambit out of its clutch and we saw that now the china is pushing for the agreement on the border area as well as pushing bhutan for its the diplomatic ties in that case this create headache for the india okay but we see see that the india and bhutan bhutan has the very special relation and we have seen that india has never rejected the bhutanese request in any case okay and you should know that uh, the source of investment in the bhutan is majorly from the india 50% of its total foreign direct investment is contributed by the india itself so this jellifu project india cannot miss opportunity if india india doesn't have that much money even this jellifu project is not going to be economically beneficial to the india but the strategically and diplomatically this has become very important because we have seen that in the case of sri lanka in the humban tota when the proposal came to india india rejected it and it was grabbed by the china and china expanded its reach into the sri lanka and for the 10 12 years it was very much headache for the india okay so here it says that the despite india doesn't have that much economic benefit but yes we will go for that because we do not want to to miss that opportunity beside that it will uh, it will try to connect uh, this bhutanese project with the Chatt uh, chattogram and mongola port into the bangladesh so it is not only going to help the india or the bhutan but it is going to benefit for the myanmar and yes it will make a way to enter into the southeast asia and cooperation with the japan and beside that by this chattogram and the mongola port of the bangladesh we are going to connect the bangladesh as well okay beside that there is the power generation opportunity here and yes due to the there is the surplus power into the bhutan and nepal we try to manage it with the balance it with the where the electricity power is needed for example in the bangladesh and into the sri lanka where the electricity supply is needed so india try to balance and that's why india want to create a a, a plan for the southeast asian power grid so you should remember this south east asian power grid that is planned to the india though so that we can balance the power surplus and power deficit into our neighborhood as well as this power can be utilized in, utilized into the jellifu as well so this jellifu has the lot of challenges but yes the challenges is everywhere where india is going for the its connectivity project here it is given that if you will take that international north south transport corridor that is india developing and here it is the chabahar port under uh, that we will enter into the central asia this is facing the western saxon due to the iran russia involvement russia involvement into the ukraine war and iranian support for the houthis because uh, beside that recently proposed india middle east economic Uh, corridor this india middle east europe economic corridor uh, this is also facing the issue due to the 
Israel's bombardment of the Gaza and the Houthi attack into the Red Sea. So the way this is facing, we are consistent. We try to develop the same way we can develop this Jalefu project as well. Okay. So here, this condition for a mega smart city with no immediate return from the investment in region for the GMC are not optimal at the present, but in the future, it's so the raise because in the future, we can keep Bhutan uh, uh, under our fold and uh, going out uh, to the in, the, in the closeness with the China and Chinese debt trap. Besides that, we see that now the world is following the tribal foreign policy. What is the tribal foreign policy? We are giving preference to the, those countries and diplomatic relations where we have the traditional or the cultural or the some of the very similar, uh, similar connectivity or the shared feature. So we can see such examples such as the uh, that to NATO block or the Asian block. They saw the tribal foreign policy. Please remember this for, uh, tribal foreign policy. May in, uh, maybe into the prelims they can ask, even you can use this into the means. This tribal foreign policy that India need to develop and for that we shared the culture, tradition, so many things with the Bhutan. So uh, we need to treat Bhutan with a very special treatment as a block. Bhutan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, we share the culture, tradition, so many things. So we see that recently we have already developed a good relationship with the Nepal. Recently we saw that the Nepal faced the economic crisis, India entered, India supported. Uh, same time, we also see that the relationship with the Bangladesh due to the Sheikh Hasina government, we have a better relationship. Even India should try to improve its relationship with the Pakistan as well. Okay, we should start with the new chapter. So all this, uh, this shows that yes, Jalifu project become a center stage for the developing all this thing. And yes, this is, uh, uh, this is, this has a lot of benefit beyond the, if you go beyond the imagination. Uh, so this seems problematic now, but in the future it will give a very positive result. So this is all about for the, uh, this news. So here we have concluded uh, most of the area. We have taken most of the area that is relevant for the UPSC. So here we will conclude our session. Thank you for joining the session. All the best. Jai Hind.